So, uh, who here likes Altoids? <laughs> All right, so who here has Altoids? Like a whole tin, like unopened? Anyone? I can't. No one? Darn. So, uh, a long time ago, uh, shortly after graduating high school, my, uh, my three friends and I, uh, Paul, Dale, and Travis, uh, you might know Travis, he's famous for making a really loud screeching noise. I won't do it. It hurts people's ears. But uh, uh, we, uh, we found this old van, a Ford Econoline, and we fixed it up, and it took like a year. But that's another story. And we went on a huge road trip to like Vegas and San Francisco and home. Because <laughs> we were poor and somebody was in Vegas still. But that's like 800 other stories. This story is about the last leg of the trip. Uh, from San Francisco to Sioux Falls. You know, it's, we did it in one shot, don't worry. Uh, what happened was, so here we are, we find ourselves in San Francisco, and we're livid. I won't tell you why, that's another story. And we decided, no, no, we're going to leave. We're going to leave San Francisco, and we're going straight home. We've had enough. We're going to get in the van. Now, this van's beautiful. It's a uh, 82 Ford Econoline. It was about 10 different shades of white. <laughs> and uh, before we left, we had found a few old cans of spray paint. <laughs> you think it's bad. It gets worse. And we, we just... We did things to this van I probably shouldn't talk to the rational people about. We, we gave it the best flame job I've ever seen. We painted a big, big red target on the roof. You know, that way if they found us, they could get us. <laughs> Made it easy. Uh, the inside was just ugly beige and pink, like at padding and carpeting. And so we piled into this thing, the three of us at the time, and we just, we just leave San Francisco at about midnight, and we go straight into Nevada, and we realize we haven't slept in like two days. So we pull into a parking lot, which is really sketchy, because there's like a motorcycle rally going on. So we, like, we pull into the back of the parking lot, and we lock all the doors, and we decide we're just gonna sleep in the van, because we only have like 100 bucks, which, there we go, there we go. If you're driving a big van hundreds of miles, 100 bucks is almost enough for gas, if you're lucky. So we pile in, we're sleeping. Travis, intelligent man, decides, I'm just gonna stay up, you know, in case shit. <laughs> Yo, so we're like, yeah, that's a great idea. Then we can like rotate. One of us will sleep, one of us can drive, and the other one can like hang out. That way we'll, we'll always have somebody doing stuff. So we haven't been home in like a few weeks. We're tired. It just it seemed like a great idea, and it was. It was probably the only intelligent idea we had the whole trip home. So we leave, we wake up at about 10.30 the next morning, and we leave. And we're just, we're like, oh, let's look at this map. This road goes all the way here, and then we can just shoot north to Sioux Falls. Easy as pie. Now we made two fatal mistakes. One, was that this road went through Nebraska. And the whole way, like the long way through Nebraska, not like the short way. The whole, like, don't do that, ever. <laughs> and it went through the sand basin of Utah. You ever, you ever been like west of Salt Lake City? It's, it's made entirely of salt. There's nothing there. Like, there's a road. There's a road and a really big fake cactus. <laughs> and that's it. Like, there's so, so little going on in this desert that people will, like, pull over and organize rocks on the side of the road to, like, spell messages like, go back while you still can. <laughs> we, we had no idea until it was too late. So, like, we come into this, this desert on, like, a peak. Because we're like, yeah, we're going down a huge hill, and there's no cops that we can see because we can see everything, which should have been a warning. 
So we like, let's just see how fast you can go. So we, we just like floor it. And uh, I don't know how fast the van can go. The speedometer stopped at 80. And it was like at 80 halfway down the hill. So, you know, we, we just like fly into the desert going way too fast for our van. It's like shaking. We can feel it. Now, a few crucial elements about our van that you should know for this part of the story is that uh, it didn't have air conditioning. Like, at all. It didn't really have fans either. It didn't like blow air. And uh, there was no radio. There was like a big hole in the dashboard <laughs> where there should be a radio and there was just nothing there. Like, they just took it out. So here we are driving through the van. It's just me and Dale. Travis is passed out in the back and Paul's in Vegas. So, Dale, like, he, who's ever been in an oven? <laughs> now, it gets really hot in an oven because that's what ovens do, you know? <laughs> and, and, then, and then pretend you're in an oven like that doesn't have air conditioning or anything. <laughs> And it's 120 degrees outside. And it's a bigger oven outside because everything's just still even hotter. Like we had the windows down and I was like, I should roll this up. Because I just... <laughs> the air coming into the van feels hotter than the air in the van. And <laughs> I can't think straight. And now I, I thought I was bad off. I finally look over and I see Dale. And here's Dale, like, Dale, Dale's, like, outside of the van, like, dangling. Like, all I see is his legs up. Up. Not up. Because he's on the door, drawing. Like, he just, he's, like, I see his arm flailing around. He's, like, grabs a marker. Because uh, at this point, we had, uh, we had run to this, this wonderful old lady who had seen our van. She's like, oh, your van looks very pretty. Here, let me give you this big bag of Sharpies. Every color you could ever want. So she gives us these Sharpies. And we're like, you know what? No. We want you to sign our van. So every single human being we ran into who stopped to look at our van for more than two seconds, usually like that, we have them sign it. So like, like there's signatures and drawings all over our van. Now here's Dale in the middle of like the hottest hot heat in the middle of July that you can imagine. And just going to town on the door. Finally, he swings back in and I'm like, Dale, you have the only pair of sunglasses on this road trip. Can I borrow them? Sure. No. <laughs> so, you know, finally we get out of the desert. We get out of the, the, the worst place I've ever been. And I've been there again since, and it was dark, and it was wonderful. You couldn't see anything. It was weird. But a lot better than during the day, I promise. Don't, never drive through the Salt Basin in July. Just, I mean, <laughs> seems like common sense. But, so we get into Nebraska, and uh, Dale, Dale's like, I'm, I'm loopy. And I'm like, yeah, but you're driving, Tyler. So I'm gonna go take a nap. Travis, Travis, wake up. So Travis comes to the front, and Travis is, he didn't really sleep. Like, you don't sleep in that kind of heat. You just sweat and wish you could sleep. So Travis sits down. Now at this point, the only food we had left in the van was a case of Altoids Wintergreen Mints. I don't ask why we had a case of Altoid Wintergreen Mints. Uh, some things are best left unknown. But Travis goes, I'm like, Travis, I need something to eat. Get me anything we have. So he comes up with like 10 tins of Altoids. This is all we have. Do we have anything to drink? This is all we have. Shit. So we, we just start eating mints for like a good hour we're just just going to town on these wintergreen mints and Travis Travis looks me dead in the eye hey I dare you to eat a whole tin at once 
I, I am offended at this point because I love wintergreen mint. I still do to this day, unfortunately. But I, I am offended that he would ask me to do that. I'm like, fine. Yeah, whatever. And he hands me a man, a whole tin of like just the big ones. If you can still find them, I, I don't know. And I, I opened it. I'm just looking at it. And I'm just like, yeah, okay. So I grabbed a little paper. Out, ah. Now, this, this would have been fine. I would have just chomped through them and nothing, except I, uh, I underestimated something. Not how minty they were, not, you know, how just overpowering they were, but how many of them are in a tin. My mouth is only so big. So here I am in the middle, I'm driving down the, <laughs> down the interstate in what is only the most conspicuous vehicle I have ever seen. <laughs> With a tin of wintergreen mints in my mouth. Uh, I'm crying because I can't move my jaw. And all I can taste is mint. And like my tears even feel minty fresh. I just, uh, I, I'm trying to, I, I'm like, uh, I'm moving my jaw with my hand just to try to grind them up. Just, uh, uh, and Travis is useless. Travis is just uh, literally out. Like, Travis is six foot eight. He weighs about 300 pounds. Big guy. He's on the floor in our van, just, just crying. He's laughing so hard, like he had won. So, of course, I can't spit any of them out. I have to muscle through with these mints in my mouth. It takes me half an hour to like, get to the point where I can finish these mints. Fortunately, fortunately for other motorists and my friends, we didn't crash, but we, it was a hard time for me. I, anyway, moral of the story, don't do that thing. <laughs> Thank you very much.